spiritual um, awareness in our lives that will bring spiritual victory in our lives. When we're aware of Christ and we're abiding in Christ, it gives birth to the spiritual victory to manifest in the world that we can see. So we're going through a series called um, Spiritual Warfare. And going through this series on Wednesday nights has made me more aware of the unseen world and, and realizing how much it affects our everyday life. Praise the Lord. There's a constant war between demons and angels, between the forces of darkness and the power of the light of Jesus Christ. These battles are going on and this, and, and this battle, this fight, is to have access in our life. Demons are fighting to bring destruction to us while angels are fighting on our behalf to protect us. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. But the good news is that there are more that there are more that are with us than they are with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not only are there two angels to every one demon, but we also have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead and crushed Satan at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. So tonight, we open our hearts, we open our spirit, we open our mind. Did I say tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. Still thinking about the game last night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning, hallelujah, we open our spirit to receive uh, an awareness of the victory we have in Christ to pull down strongholds. Praise the Lord. And walk in the victory that God called us to walk in. Amen. Amen. Um, open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Praise the Lord. And a very familiar verse, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. Praise the Lord. And while you're turning there in humility, and the reason I say why you turn there in humility is because sometimes believers have the attitude that, oh, I know that verse already. No. So just, just keep preaching to somebody else because I know that already. You know, um, that's dangerous ground to have that kind of attitude. Because let me tell you, every word of God is God-breathed. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And if we think that we know it all, then, then we will miss out on the abundance of grace that God is trying that God is providing for us to walk into. Because praise the Lord. The, the word of God is so deep, it's so rich. And and we're living in a time where we need to be hungry for a revelation. A revelation and, and not become so familiar with the scriptures that we're, we're so arrogant to think that we know it already. But we need to be humble and teachable so that the Holy Spirit can keep pouring and pouring and showing us um, aspects of God's love and God's grace that we never seen before. And that comes to a heart that's receptive, a heart that's humble, a heart that's hungry. Praise God. How much hungry hearts this morning? Praise God. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. While we are here on earth, while we um, walk in the flesh, 
we do not war according to the flesh. What you see with your eyes is not your enemy. When we have disagreements with our spouse, our spouse is not our enemy. If we have disagreements with our children, our children is not our enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We need to recognize that there is a spiritual battle in the unseen realm that, that's trying to cause division in families. Trying to cause breakups in relationships. That's trying to hinder your purpose in life that God has predestined for you to fulfill. But the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. And like the worship team sang, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And we will give God all of the praise. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, in the end of that trial, the Lord will be glorified. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as we read, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. The weapons that is provided for us as believers are mighty weapons. We have mighty spiritual weapons in our arsenal. To use in our daily lives. Hallelujah. And the title of today's message is Utilizing Our Spiritual Weapons. Hallelujah. Amen. There is so much weapons, praise the Lord, that we have. Lord, through prayer, the Holy Spirit has put it on our hearts to highlight uh, a, a couple of these weapons today. And we'll highlight a few more weapons next week Sunday. It's good to, number one, know what our weapons are. And number two, know how to use the weapons that we have. This is when we become effective ministers of the gospel. Consistent ministers of the gospel. Where we're not, we are not um, to and fro swayed by any little trial that comes, we would not be defeated or downcast. Yeah, we might be hurt for a while, but we know what weapons to use to come out of that depression. We know what weapons to use to come out of that situation that you are in, that trial, that day of darkness. We know what weapons is provided to us. And through the preaching of the word, we're equipping the saints to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Utilizing our spiritual weapons. The Bible instructs us that there are many weapons that's available to those who belong to Christ. Praise the Lord. We're going to, I just want to mention that something that the Bible calls I believe the new covenant weapon that we have. We have a new covenant weapon. And the first weapon we want to bring up is the new covenant weapon called the grace of God. Grace is the new covenant because grace brings us into the new covenant. We, we know that the old covenant the, we were all under the law but when Jesus came Jesus brought us into a new covenant. Praise the Lord. The new covenant is a weapon against the enemy. The grace of God crushes Satan. Because one thing that Satan loves to do is to accuse you. The scripture refers to him as the accuser of the brother. Day and night, the Bible says, he accuses you. He has a record of all your sins. And he brings them to accuse you. And he wants your future to be stifled by the accusations of your past. He wants your future to be crushed by the condemnations of your struggles. But Satan, the blood of Jesus, is against you. 
and the grace of God overrides the accusations of the devil. The grace of God and the blood of Jesus wipes away every stain of sin. The grace of God brings us to a place of total victory. The reason I say grace is the new covenant weapon in our spiritual arsenal is because grace is the foundation of our salvation. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Amen. We're familiar with that scripture, right? Mm -hmm. For by grace we have been saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Grace is the foundation of our sanctification. Not only are we saved by grace, but we're sanctified by grace. In other words, sanctification is the, the process of your journey as a believer. Praise the Lord. Even as a believer, not only are we saved by grace, but we're sustained by grace. A lot of believers fall into the lie that, yeah, grace saved me, but now it's my works that will keep me saved. No, that's not what the scripture teaches. The Bible says we are saved by grace and we are kept by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't get saved by grace and then we um, continue to maintain our salvation by works. Works is the, the, the evidence that Jesus lives inside of us but it's his working through us, not our works. Praise God. That's grace. Grace is everything Jesus does through us. Works is everything I do for him. That's a huge difference. That's why I don't tell people I live for Jesus. But that's common in, in Christian talk, you know. I'm going to live for Jesus. Really? I already know that. It's going to be a, a difficult road to, to, to try and live for Jesus. Because that means you have to keep all of the law in perfection to live for Because Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But as new covenant believers with the arsenal of grace, what we say is, I'm going to live in Christ Jesus. I'm in him and he's in me. And everything that happens through me is because... It's him that is working in me. Pastor Rodney brought out Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Praise God. We're conveying spiritual truth this morning. Hallelujah. And we shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? And we thank God that a spiritual truth is being... Um, conveyed into your ears and dropped into your hearts and renewing your minds. The word of God will work in us throughout the week and bring that victory. And it's all by God's grace. What makes grace so powerful is the fact that every area of our life is governed by a gift freely given. That's what qualifies our lives to be under grace. Because grace is the unmerited, unearned, and undeserved favor of God. It's a gift. If it isn't a gift, it isn't grace. If you earn it, it ain't grace anymore. Praise God. So if I gave you a present, that's by God's grace. You don't deserve it. I give it to you anyway because I love you. That's grace. But if you try to give me $10 and say thank you, now, it, now it's not grace anymore. Now, now you purchased the gift because you gave me money for it. Now it's a purchase. The only purchase that took place is when the blood of Jesus purchased us on the cross. Hallelujah. He purchased us. But we do not have enough qualities within us to qualify to purchase our own salvation. We needed someone to make the payment for us. 
And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, the Bible says in John, that through Moses, the law was given. But through Jesus Christ, grace and truth was given to us. Praise God. Grace is the undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor of God. Grace is a weapon because it places us in a position that we absolutely cannot lose. We cannot lose when we're under grace. Why? Because under grace we remain clothed with the robe of righteousness even when we fail. And we're not preaching grace as a license to sin. We're preaching how grace crushes sin. And the righteousness of God is raised within you. Brother Aaron just woke up. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Who's waiting for that? Who's waiting for that, Brother Aaron? Hallelujah. Grace brings total victory in our lives because we cannot fail because of the blood of Jesus that is our righteousness. Praise God. When Jesus is your righteousness, you cannot fail. We sing the song, I worship you, almighty God. For you are my righteousness, my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. That's why I'm righteous. We're not righteous because we do righteous things. We're righteous because Jesus is our righteousness. We are clothed with the robe of righteousness. And we do not deserve it. Praise God. Grace is keeps no record of sin. Grace only has one record, and that's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The resurrection of Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Fulfilling the God-given purpose that God has mantled on our lives. Can you hear an amen? amen. Grace is a weapon. Hallelujah. And thank God that we are living under grace. And not under the law. If I can read to you real quickly. Romans 6.14. The scripture declares. Hallelujah. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law. But under grace. Because we are under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Grace frees us from sin. Grace doesn't. Come give us a right to sin. Grace gives us freedom from sin. Hallelujah. Because Christ came to wash our sins away. Praise the Lord. Come on, oh, happy day. Amen, Sister Faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. The grace of God is much more than a message. It's much more than just forgiveness of sins. It's much more than God picking me up every time I fail. The most dominant definition of grace in the New Testament is the life of Christ dwelling in us. Paul defined the life of Christ dwelling in us as the grace of God. That's good news. Hallelujah. You don't have to sin to experience God's grace. Every time you abide in Christ, you experience God's grace. As his life flows through you, the grace of God is flowing through you. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord. Don't get me start preaching now. God is good. Hallelujah. And we won our basketball game last night. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, the mercy of God bless you. We wear many hats, hallelujah. Praise God. Last night was coach hat. Today is preacher hat. Tomorrow will be daddy hat. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many hats we wear. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 15 10. You can just listen because I'll I'll read this from the New Living Translation. It says, but whatever I am now, 
It is all because God poured out his special favor on me. My God, let me read that again. That's good stuff. But whatever I am now, Sister Rose, it is all because God poured out his special favor upon me. Praise God. And not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. Wow. Oh, I feel like dancing now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So grace is a mighty weapon in our spiritual arsenal that has crushed Satan at the foot of the cross. Can you hear an amen? amen. How many of you are thankful for grace? Amen. The grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me do that because I've seen about 15 to 20 hands go up. I know there's about probably 60, 70 people here in the church. How many of you are thankful for the grace of God? Amen. amen. Okay. Praise God. Either some of you don't understand English, or praise God, we just got to keep preaching till you get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was about half of you, but that's good. More than the first time. One more time. Yeah, Pastor Adi. How many of you are thankful for the grace of God? Hallelujah. Oh, that's pretty good. Hallelujah. It's pretty good. Still not everybody. Still not everybody. We're getting one more time. We only get so much tape. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful for the grace of God? Yeah, no, that's everybody. Amen. Where there is unity, God commands the blessing. We got to press on until we are unified. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If we cannot even do this, gosh, what is the condition of the church? Hallelujah. If we cannot do this, hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Another weapon we have in our arsenal of spiritual weaponry. Hallelujah. That's good. Is angels. Hallelujah. We spoke about this Wednesday night. But about 90% of you was not here Wednesday night. <laughs> but angels is a mighty weapon that we have in our spiritual arsenal. Hallelujah. Praise God. But, uh, but, uh.
Praise God. I was about to bust out with a spiritual weapon. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Love you, man. Those, those shades are cool. Hallelujah. Praise God. Angels is a mighty weapon that we have in our spiritual arsenal. Praise the Lord. The scripture calls them in Hebrews ministering spirits that are available to all believers as they are in constant battle against demonic forces in the unseen realm. Praise God. There are angels that are battling and fighting to protect you everywhere you go. Even when you don't deserve it. Praise God. Psalm 91 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. All your ways. He shall give his angels charge over you. Psalm 34 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and he delivers them. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. And he delivers them. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. And I like what Billy Graham said. That angels are God's secret agents. Hallelujah. They are constantly standing post. Ready to heed the voice of the Lord. When I say secret agent. That reminds me of my father-in-law. Hallelujah. Like a secret agent in spiritual battle and he was he always shares his testimony in the philippines how they had the gun to his head but they couldn't pull the trigger and god's angels praise the lord rescued him where they couldn't pull the trigger to shoot him hallelujah and if they pulled the trigger hallelujah Half of our congregation wouldn't have a wife right now. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God for the angels. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the angels. Hallelujah. God is good. The Bible says that there are times in our lives that we can entertain angels without even knowing it. Praise the Lord. In fact, why don't you turn there? Hebrews 13, 1 through 2. 1 through 2. Does that, is that how you say? 1 through 2? Praise the Lord. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2 says, But let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, wait, don't forget to enter the stranger. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Praise God. And I, I believe that I've experienced this in my own life. Entertaining angels without even knowing it. Praise God. I shared this on Wednesday. That there was a pastor's meeting that I went to. Um, and then after the meeting, I was walking to my car in the parking lot. A lady came walking behind me and uh, just began to talk to me. Um, but I was, I had a long meeting and I just wanted to get to my car. So um, I was, I had a pleasant conversation, but I was just going to my car. I wasn't really fully into the conversation, to be honest. But she was, she was speaking to me. Um, you know about at first she was talking about my um my weight and how you know um some something about uh, some weight that uh, that you know that she learned i could lose weight so you know um so i was listening you know um mind you we just stayed from a restaurant hallelujah <laughs> praise god so one walk and then all of a sudden the, as i got closer to my car the conversation just shifted and then she just began to say, you know, um, I just want to encourage you to keep preaching the gospel, to keep doing what you're doing, that, you know, um, that the Lord is with you. And um, she was just encouraging me. And I, and I was just receiving it because I'm so used to people talking like that. And then, and then, then when, I, when I reached to my car, she said, 
okay, Carlos, you have a good day now. And then she walked away, and then I, as I collected myself, I realized I never told that lady my name, and I never told her that I was a minister of the gospel. And then the conversation just shifted as I got close to the car. And I, and I, and I, and I was asking the Lord, I, I wonder if that was an angel that you had sent to encourage me. You know when Jesus was tempted, an angel was sent to strengthen him? Even in Gethsemane, when, when he was praying great drops of blood, an angel came to, to minister to him. If Jesus received ministry from the angelic host that is provided to him, how much more should we receive the ministry of the angelic host that is provided to us? Hallelujah. Can you hear an amen? amen? Angels are powerful angelic forces that are of vast number. There's many angels. Hallelujah. Daniel said in Daniel 7.10, he said that the angels were thousands upon thousands and ten thousands upon ten thousands. When he described the vast number of angels. We must have had about 10,000 angels with our basketball team last night. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. They were definitely employed last night. Praise God. And what I love about angels that, that touched my heart um, is Matthew 18, 10. Uh, it's so precious. Some of you can, can turn there, but others can just listen. Matthew 18, 10, it says, To take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, Jesus said, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Even our children have angels assigned to them. For Jesus said, their angels always see the face of my Father. So do not despise these little ones. Praise God. Stephen, when he found out that I was preaching on angels, when we picked him up from school yesterday, reminded us of the time when his mother, Myra, Caneso Rodriguez ran over his foot with the car. And he said he didn't feel anything and there were no injuries to his foot. Stephen believes that his angel was assigned to him that day. Praise God. I thought Myra only run, hit um, adults, but God is good. Amen. So there's many angels assigned to us and to our children. Amen. Yes, sir. So let's employ our angels and pray. That our Lord Jesus Christ and his mighty host of angels would fight every battle on our behalf and rain down the victory from the unseen realm to manifest in the world that we see. You, praise God. So this is why, praise the Lord. Grace is a weapon that we have in the arsenal of our spiritual warfare. Angels is a weapon we have. There's so much weapons. We're going to bring out one more weapon today. Of course, the most important and the primary weapon that is used in spiritual war warfare is the living rhema word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Praise God. The living rhema word of God. I never just said the, the Bible. I said the living rhema word of God. Praise the Lord. The, the word of God that becomes a revelation in your heart is a weapon against the enemy. Because a lot of people, the devil himself knows scriptures. Anyone can have script knowledge of scriptures. But when the 
the, that which is logos, that which is written, becomes a living revelation inside of you that stirs up that faith that is within you, where the word is the anchor to your faith. And then the words that you speak are, are, are words that come from the revelation of the word of God that is anchored in my spirit. This is when the word of God becomes a weapon against the enemy. Remember, Satan used the Bible even, even when he tempted Jesus. But Jesus was the living word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Satan said, make this stone become bread, Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is written. When he said, jump off the cliff, he said, it is written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. It is written. It is written. It is written. Then boom, Satan was crushed. And he left. Hallelujah. Because the, the weapon of the word of God was used to crush Satan. Praise the Lord. No other source speaks more highly of the effectiveness of the word of God than the word of God. Praise God. Pastor Cynthia got that one, I think. Everybody else, you'll get it by Wednesday. It is in the Word of God that we find how important the Word of God is. The Word of God is the primary weapon that we have to cross Satan. The Word of God. So I find it wise to use the Word of God to prove this point. I'm just going to bring out the Word of God to prove the Word of God. I mean, you know, the word of God proves the word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Somebody asked me, how do you know the Bible is the word of God? It's because the Bible says it's the word of God. The Bible says it's the word of God. Then it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then when that word of God becomes rhema, that's when you know it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 4.12. Um, you can just listen to this one because I'll read it from New Living Translation and the other two. You can start turning to 2 Timothy 3, 16. But Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes the innermost thoughts and desires. The word of God. It pierces our soul. It exposes us. Oh, that's a good yawn, brother. That's a good one. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Second Timothy 3.16, if you turn there. The scripture says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is a wonderful verse to put to memory. Hallelujah. That all scripture is given by inspiration of God, or all scripture is God breathed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I think someone brought out in a recent message um, that, that even Billy Graham, um, when people was questioning the authentic, uh, is that word? Uh, how authentic the Bible is. <laughs> Praise God. Always a way of escape. Hallelujah. Praise God. When people were challenging him on the uh, authenticity of the scripture. Thank you. Who said that? Praise God. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. Praise God. 
you know, he went into the, the mountains and, and then he just put the Bible up on a, on a tree stump. And he said, God, I don't know everything in this book. But I trust in you that this is your word. And from this day forward, I'm going to believe that you're going to do a supernatural work in my heart. And I'm going to believe that this book, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, is the living word of God. It's your word. And, 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 and since that day, he had a supernatural breakthrough in his life. To just believe that the Bible is the word of God. And he needed that because there was a lot of opposition coming against him at that time. But the spirit of the living God rose within him. And the word of God became a revelation in him as he began to preach the gospel all over the world. Praise God. Psalm 119.11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. I love that verse. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So Stephen and I were, were uh, putting scripture to memory together. And uh, he, he learned four scriptures. And then we're working on the fifth one this week. And um, he's enjoying it. I'm teaching him the how I learned to memorize scripture. and So we're doing it together and he's really enjoying it. Because we want the word of God to permeate the, the hearts of our children. Praise God. Because we cannot be with our children 24-7. But the living word can be with them 24-7. Hallelujah. The spirit of the living God can be with them 24-7. Psalm 119.105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God gives us guidance in life. Many of us, because we live in such a dark world, we need direction. We need light. The word is a light to our path. Praise the name of Jesus. How many of you are thankful for the word of God? Amen. 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 Let's give Amen. Jesus a mighty hand. And as we come to the conclusion of the message this morning, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Shane. God is good. Life is full of seasons. Amen? Life is full of seasons. When everything seems to be going good in life, testify of God's goodness. Because God is a good God. But know in your heart that that pleasant experience that you are having is a season of an experience of God's goodness. So there will be times, praise the Lord, when everything in our life seems to be going wrong. Hallelujah. But be encouraged. Because in those dark days, in those dark seasons, know that what you're going through is only a season. It's only a season. The scripture says, the weeping may endure through the night. Joy comes in the morning. Yes. Hallelujah. In our journey in life, we will experience many different seasons. Seasons of spiritual breakthrough and seasons of demonic attack. There will be times when Satan's attack will be so strong where you don't feel the presence of the Lord and you feel the, the effectiveness of those attacks. This is when we hold on to who we know God is and we dig deep into the reservoir of Christ living in us and we hold on to his everlasting arms. Until this season passes, we hold on to Christ and we trust in his sovereignty. We trust in his faithfulness. We trust in his goodness. 
even when our minds cannot understand what we're going through. Praise God. It's only a season. There may be seasons of experiencing the tangible presence of the Lord. And there'll be seasons like David when he said, my soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. David had seasons when the presence of the Lord was so strong that he danced before the Lord, rejoiced before the Lord. And there's other seasons that David went through that it was so dry and so weary. But the Lord was always faithful. Praise the Lord. Whatever season we're going through, it's only a season. It's only a season. The Lord is the light of our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Let's take the weapons that we've learned of this morning. The weapon of the grace of God. And stand firm that God's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor is upon your life. The weapon of angels that surround us. The angelic host. Employ them to your children. Employ them to your car. Employ them to your life. When you pray, say, Lord, I thank you for the angelic host that surrounds me everywhere I go. How many times have you almost hit another car but just missed it? How many times have you something almost happened? It's the angels, praise God, that protects us. We thank God for the weapon of the Word of God. Let's read the Word, meditate on the Word, memorize the Word, sleep with the Word on your chest, listen to the Word, speak the Word, because Jesus is the Word. You cannot love Jesus without loving His Word. One of His names is the Word of God. And it's his word that reveals his love. And it's the cross that confirms his love. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes and let the Lord minister to you today. As you are equipped with the arsenal that the Lord provides you this morning. To stay in an attitude of prayer, we call a pastor simply close us in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. He equips us totally. He equipped us when Jesus died on the cross. But he teaches us how to employ all the weapons. You are a victorious people. Always remember that. That's far ahead. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you love us so much, Lord. That you cover us in your grace, Lord. For by grace through faith we have been saved. We thank you for your angels, Lord, mighty in power, who always serve us and protect us, Lord. And we thank you especially for Jesus Christ, the living word who dwells within us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that because he lives in us, your Holy Spirit will impart to us everything we need to know about walking in victory, walking in victory in spiritual warfare. So this day we thank you, O oh God, and we praise you, and we give you the glory in Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said victorious. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say you are victorious. Amen.